A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Despite more legislation and increasing efforts to raise awareness, gender equality remains elusive in the workplace. How can we expand the pay and employment opportunities to create more equal opportunities for women? Jennifer Sherman is the Senior Vice President of Product at a fintech and payment company. In today's talk, she assesses gender inequities in business and offers three tips on how women can advance in the job market. The statistics on women in the workplace are terrible. While we are 58% of the undergraduate degrees awarded in this country, we're 37% of middle management. We're 28% of the vice presidents. And this conversation is stale. Do you remember the movie Nine to Five? (laughs) So Dolly Parton and Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin kidnap their boss, Dabney Coleman, and they tie him up in bondage gear And while he's out, they institute workplace reforms like on-site childcare and flex hours. And we're still talking about things like childcare and flex hours, like that's going to be the key to unlocking gender parity in corporate leadership. And at our current rate of progress, that's going to take another 500 years to do. So now I'm reading in the literature about this concept of sticky floors instead of glass ceilings. And the idea is that women are holding themselves back. We are not fighting the way our male colleagues are for recognition and for promotions and for the respect we deserve. The idea is that we are afraid that the expectation that a corporate executive be able to work at any time from any place is inconsistent with our need for balance. So even before we have children, we take ourselves out of the game. There's a uh, professor at the University of California, Berkeley, professor of psychology named Stephen Hinshaw. And he writes about something he calls the triple bind facing adolescent girls. He says that society has this set of expectations on our daughters that it doesn't have on our sons. We expect our daughters to be successful. They have to be athletic and smart. We expect them to be friendly and popular. And we expect them to be beautiful and sexualized at a very early age. And so Hinshaw is writing about what this does to our daughters and what they are in turn doing to themselves because of this. But what I can't find in the literature is anyone talking about the triple bind facing adult women today. We're expected to be homemakers. You've got to be Martha Stewart and Claire Huxtable rolled into one, raising college-bound, well-adjusted children. And you have to do it with grace and poise and charm. You've got to be beautiful and thin and forever young. And you've got to man up at work and be a corporate executive. And I think that's the most insidious bind of all because it pits women against women. Because it's your fault if you're not pursuing that corner office. You're bringing womankind down. I remember my freshman orientation, a professor spoke to us. He was a professor of computer science, and he was a great man and a wonderful teacher and totally lit up by his work. And one of his concerns was that there weren't enough women in engineering. So I became an industrial engineer, not because I loved it or the work lit me up, but it seems that that's what womankind needed me to do. (laughs) And... You know, I definitely appreciate the, the legitimacy that my technical degree gives me, but I am certainly glad that I had the sense to exit the field after I graduated. <laughs> and I'm not crazy. Every day I watch women tie themselves up in knots trying to be what they think their family or society or some larger cause needs them to be. And it's generous and it's selfless, but it doesn't make them happy. I mean, how can you be happy if you're supposed to out-women the women at home and out-men the men at work? And I don't even know if the corporate game is one that women are biologically or culturally programmed to want to play. If you think about it, the corporation is an entity created by and for men, by the way, who exists 
to pursue larger and larger market share against its, its competition, right, for greater and greater profit. And internally, individuals are re rewarded for pursuing larger and larger turf within that organization. I'm not an anthropologist, but that looks like the games that boys were playing on the schoolyard when they were trying to stay king of the hill and capture all of the marbles. Me and my girlfriends were playing house. And I'm not saying that we can't be competitive and that we can't win, but I wonder if we have to give up our femininity to do it. That's what I thought. When I left school and entered the workplace, I found an environment that expected me to be achievement-oriented, assertive, and competitive. And I saw no room for femininity, so I gave mine up. And I was rewarded for my assertiveness, but by the time I was 30, there was no more of me to sacrifice. I finally had to step back and really think about what would make me happy, and what game did I really want to be playing here, and what can I commit myself and my life to? And it's six years later, and I still don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> but I am happier being in that pursuit. But the difference is I'm not trying to assimilate anymore, because fitting into a culture won't change it. So no, there's no ship coming to save me or to ensure my success. But if I look at the shore, I see that in a lot of places in American corporations, we are the majority now, which means that we now have an opportunity to create the change in the corporation that we want to see. And I think that starts by redefining what it means to win in corporate life, and perhaps bring some of the girl games into that sphere. I do have three pieces of advice. First, you've got to find a sponsor who will be your advocate for your career. We spend a lot of time talking about mentors and coaches, and that's great. But at the end of the day, careers are made in closed-door executive meetings where your organization's alignment is being discussed. And you need to have someone in that room who's going to throw your name in the hat. If you don't, you could be the best employee your company has, but you'll never be given the opportunity to change your career with a new leadership offer. And that means networking up, and not just to your manager, but up and broad. Second, whatever game you play, you're not going to win every round, and women need to learn how to fail. If I do see a difference between my male and female colleagues, it's that the men treat failure as a learning opportunity, and they move on. And women confuse failing with being a failure, and we let it take us out of the game. A few years ago at Oracle, I pitched a product that I thought was going to be quick to build and make a lot of money. It was really slow to build and never made any money. And I thought that tainted my reputation. And so I didn't pitch anything for a long time, until I noticed that my male colleagues went right on pitching. They felt no such stigma. And had I been a ball player, I would have taken myself out of the game after the first strikeout. And finally, I think whatever game you are here at a corporation to play, we have to respect the game that all women are there to do. Whether you're shooting for the corner office, or you're trying to pick yourself up off of a sticky floor, or you're perfectly happy being an individual contributor and doing your job well, the corporation needs us all to thrive and succeed in order to be successful. And so we need to respect the games that all women play. So, I wake up every morning and I ask myself, what can I do to create a workplace that works for women? And I invite you to be in that inquiry. What can you do to create a workplace that works for all? The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in San Francisco, California. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx FIDI Women. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Visit our website at ted.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.